Okay, so we're not talking about this way, we're talking about what the function is doing as we're going along the x-axis. Give me decreasing. How many intervals do we have that are decreasing? One. From where to where? Zero to two. Yeah, if, we, if we're not understanding this, what some people will say is from three to negative three. Is that our period of, of decreasing? No, no. That would be the range that we're decreasing from here to here, but what I'm talking about is the function is decreasing on the x interval from zero to two. Do you see what I'm talking about there? Yeah or no? Are there questions about that? You guys dead today? I see a lot of that. Seems counterintuitive not to say negative from one to zero. Negative I'm increasing. Or at that, that point where it crosses the excesses, excesses the first time on the left. Right here? Yeah. But we're still increasing from here as well. Oh, so it slowly will eventually go. We always read from left to right. Mm -hmm. So we're saying when we start this function at negative infinity, because it never ends. When we start this function, it's automatically starting to go up. And it keeps going up and keeps, look at, as I'm going, like a timeline, right? It keeps going up, keeps going up, keeps going up, keeps going up, 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 stops. Going down, going down, going down, going down, going down, going down, stops. Going up, going up, going up, going up, going up, going up, forever, forever. Do you see what I'm talking about? Have I, have I drolled you into a state where you're almost sleeping now? Yes? Good. I'm glad, glad that's you. Two hours of sleep. Hey, me too. All you have to do is sit there. Think about me. Come on. <laughs> Selfish people. <laughs> Zero to two is decreasing. If you need more help on that, you come and see me. Uh, how about concave up? You need to be able to determine concave up to concave down. Am I concave up here? No. Concave up? Concave, how about here? Yes. Concave up. This is concave up? No. This is right here? No. Where does it start? Right there. Ah. Concave up? <coughs> concave up? Forever. Concave up from 1 to infinity. Concave down, let's start that. Remember, it has to go in order of a number line. Where do we start being concave down? Remember, you're talking about the x-axis. The x-axis. Where do you start being concave down? Infinity. Up till what point? One. 1. This is all concave down until you get to here, right? x-axis says negative infinity to 1. Is there an inflection point? Zero. If you change concavity, <laughs> you have an inflection point. Uh, what is it at? 1. Zero. Zero. Does it change concavity here? Just so. Does it change concavity here? No. x equals 1. Or the point 1, 0. I know the notation kind of sucks because we don't have different notation for intervals versus points. That's an interval. That says from 0 to 2, non-inclusive. From 1 to infinity, non-inclusive. Negative infinity to 1, non-inclusive. That's a point, 1 to 0. Okay, that's an actual specific point. I know our notation is horrible because points and intervals look the same for some numbers. But that this is a point. Those were all intervals. But you have to feel okay with our intervals of increasing and decreasing. If we stick with it, we'll, we'll talk about one more. You know, we get practice on it on your homework as well. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> um, how about this? Let's see if if you kind of really understand what you're what you're doing here. By the way, were there any questions on that before um, I move on? I saw some people who weren't really quite grasping the whole why we have why we have these numbers, but you have to think that this is all on the x-axis. You're not talking about the heights of the actual function. You're talking about where it's increasing, decreasing. So you're not you're not going to have a three. You're not going to have a three. You're talking it's going into increasing until x equals zero. Then it stops increasing. It's decreasing from zero to. Two, that starts increasing again from 2 
to infinity, and that's what we're talking about. And that's what, how you determine those intervals. Does that make a little bit more sense, hopefully? Uh, now, at each point, here's what I want to do. I want to determine whether our first derivative or, and second derivative are positive or negative. That's what I want to do here. So, let's take a look at it. Let's look at point A. I'll help you out with point A, and then the rest of what I want you to do on your own, just practice it. On point A, I want you to look at our first derivative. The first derivative means slope. The first derivative says whether I'm increasing or decreasing. Remember that? First derivative says increasing or decreasing. If the first derivative is positive, I'm increasing, going up. If the first derivative is negative, I'm decreasing, going down. So let's look at very carefully, very slowly, let's think about the first derivative at A. Is my function climbing or falling at the point A? Falling. Is that increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. So should this be positive or negative? negative? The first derivative will be negative there. Definitely negative. It says that my slope is negative. My slope's less than zero. That means I'm decreasing. Do you follow me? Now, let's think about the second derivative. At the point A, the second derivative says whether my slope is changing positively or negatively. Is it my slope is increasing or my slope is decreasing? So think about this. Is my slope getting gradually bigger or getting gradually smaller? So then my slope is increasing. Do you follow me? My slope is increasing. Also, that means I should be concave up. Am I concave up right there? For concave up, is that positive or negative? The second derivative will be positive. It says, my slope is increasing. My second derivative should be positive. Do the rest. Do B and C. So let's go for it. At point B, if I'm looking at point B, my function's increasing. My slope is positive, so this should be positive. At point B, well, that's almost at the cutoff, but it's still, the slope is still a little bit increasing right there. So at point B, we're still increasing. This should also be positive. Did you get both of those positive? Yeah. It's increasing, and it's concave up. That's how you can view that as well. Point C. At point C, my function is decreasing, my slope is negative, that means my slope is negative, that's certainly true. And also, my slope is getting gradually less and less and less, so my slope is decreasing as well. If my slope is decreasing, that's also negative, concave down as well. How many of you got both those right? Good for you. If not, no three mistake. Was it was the first derivative or second derivative? First derivative is increasing, decreasing. Second derivative is concavity. Decreasing, concave up. Decreasing, concave up. Increasing, concave up. Increasing, concave up. Decreasing, concave down. Decreasing, concave down. That's the same exact uh, language that, well, same exact idea that we just talked about. Now, the next thing we're gonna we're gonna start getting into is relative extrema and how that relates to graphing polynomials. So let's look a little bit about what relative extrema means. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Here's what a relative extreme. Here's what relative extrema means. It means a relative max or relative min. You've heard that before. Just to refresh your memory. A relative max is basically the idea of a high point on an interval. It doesn't have to be the highest point on the graph, it just has to be the high point on a little interval. It is a peak. It's a peak for an interval. Not the absolute, not the absolute max necessarily, but it is for an interval.
the high point. Here's a better definition. A relative max happens when a function changes from increasing to decreasing. That should make sense to us, right? From increasing to, look at, from increasing to decreasing, we should have a peak. That's a relative max. It doesn't have to be the highest point on the graph, but that's the definition for relative max. So the high point, that's kind of an old, old definition. That's not very mathematical. This is where a function changes from increasing to decreasing. You know what, relative min has basically the, the opposite definition right there. A relative min is going to be a low point in an interval. Other, in other words, it's going to be where you change from decreasing to increasing. That should make sense, right? If you go from decreasing to increasing, you're going to have a little valley, a low point. So dot, 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 where the function changes from decreasing to increasing. Very quick examples for you, just so you have a little look at this. Would you be able to find me my relative extrema here? Relative extrema happens where you are changing from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So, Stop me when I get to relative extrema, okay? Here, no. No, because we're not changing, increasing, decreasing. Okay, you have that's part of our definition. So we're going to start here, no. Where do I get one? Uh, what is this? Uh, max. Relative max, very good. Relative max. Is it the absolute max? No. Is it the highest my function goes? Mm -mm. That would be, right? That would be. How about, let's keep going. What else? There. Here, that's a relative min. Relative min. Uh, keep going. This one? There. Yep. That's another relative max. And then there, that's another relative min. And then, how about this one? Yeah. Even though it's an absolute max, which we'll talk about later, it could still be a relative max. No problem. We have three relative maxes. We have two relative mins in this problem. Do you understand the idea of a relative max, relative min? Changing from increasing to decreasing for maxes, that gives us a peak. Decreasing to increasing for min, a relative min, that gives us a valley. My question is this. If this is a change from increasing to decreasing, or decreasing to increasing, that has to do with the slope, doesn't it? If the slope is positive, we're increasing, right? The slope is negative or decreasing, true? Well, what happens at a change from increasing to decreasing, what does the slope automatically have to do if we're going from increasing to decreasing? At some point between a plus slope and a minus slope, you have to hit what number? Zero. You have to hit a zero. So what's happening to the slope as I'm getting to a relative max, as I'm getting to a relative min, max, min, max? What's happening?